What's up guys, this is Mike, the Detroit Borg, with a review of the fourth generation Apple Time Capsule. Now, the original Time Capsule was introduced in January 2008, and is essentially an airport extreme with a built-in hard drive for network-attached storage. This works with OS X's Time Machine Backup Utility, which then runs in the background to maintain a perpetual backup of all your files. The new fourth generation Time Capsule is available in two sizes. 2 terabyte for 299 and 3 terabyte for 499. Like all previous updates, the changes are internal with some significant hardware and software improvements. But more on that later. Now let's just take a look to see what we get inside our box here. Looks like we have a little tab here to cut. Designed by Apple in California and inside is our time capsule. Lifts right up. So we're going to take a look at this in just a minute, but first let's see what we get inside the box besides the time capsule. So we have a power cord, and of course the time capsule has an internal power supply, so there is no external power supply here, just a simple cord. We also have a little pouch here, probably with some literature. Setup guide, warranty, and that's all. No Apple stickers with this accessory. Now let's take a look at the time capsule, and on the bottom we should have a little tab here to help us peel this plastic envelope off. Should slide right out. There you go. Now taking a look around the time capsule, we can see nothing has changed in terms of its design. It's still made out of this white polycarbonate plastic, which is very shiny. It resembles the white polycarbonate MacBook. We do have this nice metal uh, Apple logo here. We can see it's very shiny. It's like a little mirror and it's inlaid into the white polycarbonate plastic. On the bottom of the time capsule is a very grippy rubber foot with a deep notch around the side. This allows the time capsule to breathe and exhaust through that notch on the side. So you can see, if you look closely, you can see it sort of disappears under the top of the time capsule and there is a hidden vent in there which allows the time capsule to breathe. That's important because the time capsule contains a hard drive and an internal power supply so it needs to stay cool. Now on the back we have our power supply, a USB connector, the WAN or Y area network connector. This is where you'll input your internet and we have three LAN ports to connect other devices. We also have a MagSafe connector so this doesn't easily walk off your desk and we have a reset button. And on the front we have an LED indicator which indicates the status of your time capsule. Now it's time to connect and configure the time capsule. To configure the router launch the airport utility on your Mac. Now the first device I'm seeing here is my old time capsule. You may have to wait a moment for the new time capsule to appear for the first time. Once it does, click on it and select continue. In my case, I have to switch to the new router to complete the configuration. Now I can name the time capsule and give it a password. Now the utility will walk you through the process of setting up the appropriate configuration for your needs. In my case, my time capsule is attached to my ISP's router through an ethernet cable. My time capsule will then become the wireless access point for all my devices. So I want to create a new wireless network. Here I can name my network and set my password. Since my ISP router is serving my IP addresses, I want to select bridge mode. Now all I need to do is select update and the time capsule will restart and apply the changes. Once that's complete, we now have internet access and can set up the time machine to back up to the time capsule. To do this, choose select disk and choose the time capsule from the device list. The initial backup can take an hour or days, depending on how much you have to back up. In my case, I'm backing up nearly one and a half terabytes, so it's going to take about two days to do this wirelessly. Now, it's much faster if the time capsule was directly connected via USB or Ethernet, but wired backups are incompatible with wireless, so I need to stay wireless for the whole process. Now let's go back to the old time capsule so I can show you how to use Time Machine to recover deleted files. Now launching Time Machine essentially brings up Finder inside this very neat surrounding, which then allows you to browse all your files and folders through all the stored backups. You can see the timeline of your backups on the right side. These backups are retained only until the time capsule starts running out of room. The older backups are then automatically deleted to free up space. If we go back to the files on my desktop back on August 9th, I can see a few files which I have since deleted. If I wanted to restore one of these files, I right click and choose restore. I'm then brought out of the time machine and now prompted to choose a file location. Time machine backups can also be used to restore your data should you wish to do a clean install or replace the hard disk drive or SSD on your computer. 
Now the Time Machine will also mount as an attached network drive, which means you can drag and drop files directly to that drive so other computers can have access to them. All you need is to enter your password when you go to access those files. However, I recommend keeping the space free for backups or you will start running into space conflicts with the Time Machine backups. You can also attach a second USB drive to the time capsule or more if you use a USB hub. In this case, I have a two terabyte Seagate drive which I can also use as a backup volume or network storage. Now beyond backups and network storage, the time capsule is also a fully featured router with dual band support for simultaneous 2.4 and 5 gigahertz wireless networks. This is important since many households now have devices operating in both spectrums. The time capsule also allows you to create a guest network, which allows guests to use your internet connection without sharing your password or giving them access to the rest of your network. Now for the fourth generation, Apple has made some hardware improvements. They've moved from Marvel to Broadcom chipsets, which is now compatible with next generation WLAN technology as seen in the new Apple MacBook Pros. The result is faster and more stable Wi-Fi at greater range. Anecdotally, I can see dramatic range improvements on my property. One time capsule can now cover all levels in my house and my entire yard, which radiates about 80 feet from the location of the time capsule within my office. The previous time capsule would only cover about 50 feet and would drop out in the basement or certain parts of the yard. Overall, I've been very happy with my time capsules and have never had a failure in nearly three years, but have cautiously recommended them because the wireless hardware has generally underperformed cheaper, full-featured routers, and Time Machine works with any attached drive for quite a bit less money. However, the latest iteration has made significant improvements and is now a cutting-edge network option with very user-friendly software. The Time Capsule certainly is a very elegant and integrated solution for those who wish to reduce the wires and devices floating around near their computer. I've always preferred to keep my desk clutter free, so having a nearly invisible automated backup solution hiding somewhere in my office is preferable to more wires and black boxes taking up space. The only gripe I have is the huge $200 markup for the 3 terabyte volume, which is unjustified when standalone 3 terabyte drives are hovering around $100 right now. However, at $299, I think the 2 terabyte time capsule is a very reasonable value for every Mac owner. So that's it for me, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.